I was walking through the removable department the other day and saw something that I thought would be of interest to you because it was of interest to me. And certainly we all know how CAD CAM has had uh, a great effect on the crown and bridge world. And we've now seen it make its first uh, foray into the world of dentures. And this is pretty exciting stuff. I like, um, uh, at the beginning when I heard that the denture department was playing around with CAD CAM, I thought it was CAD CAM for the sake of CAD CAM, you know, because it might be a good marketing angle or something like that. But I've been very pleased with um, what we've seen since then. And it's definitely not that. Um, it definitely makes some things a little easier on our end, but it also makes them more accurate and, and it makes for a better patient experience and you'll see why in just a minute. So the first part's the same. You take the master impressions on the patient, send them into us and we pour up the models and then we scan that. Uh, and then instead of sending anything back, there's no wax bite blocks or anything. This is actually what we're able to send back to you. And you're gonna notice as I go to take this off, you're gonna notice something that you really haven't seen before or I haven't seen before, taking off wet wax rims from models. And that is that you have to s struggle just a little bit to get it off because, there we go, because of the intimate fit uh, between this uh, and the stone model. And that's because this is actually printed on an, uh, a 3D printer, an object printer. And you can probably see that obviously this is just one shade of material, of resin actually, that has been printed up here. And unlike the things we used to make before with the base plates that had the wax rims on, this is extremely accurate. And you got a feel for that watching me kind of rip it off this model. Now the good news is when you try this into the patient's mouth, you're gonna get that same type of fit. So you're gonna know instantly, this early in the, per, in the procedure, you're gonna know at this point whether or not the impression and the scan and everything is good because this will fit in a patient's mouth and if it's a good impression, they will have difficulty taking this out because of the palatal seal. They will struggle to kind of get it out and that's a good sign, that's what you wanna see. If you put this in and it's flopping around, before we go any farther, you know that we probably need to take a new impression. Maybe we missed something back here in the post-am area, but we're going to need another impression because this is the fit that you're going to get from the final denture. And so after the very first appointment, you're going to be able to see that. Before with the wax rims, they would kind of go in and out and flutter all over. Sometimes we'd have to put denture adhesive in, and that was kind of a mess too. You'll notice that uh, if you remember, if you've used us for a removable before, on our old bite rims, we would just put the two central incisors there. Well, we have the opportunity to do a little bit more with CAD CAM, and so we're able to set the teeth into some pink wax here so that you can make adjustments if necessary. So now all the anterior teeth are available to be moved. Uh, they're kind of in a perfect arch form right now, but you try this into a patient's mouth, and if something needs to be uh, longer or rotated or whatever, it's just a, simply a matter of heating up a wax spatula, softening the wax, and moving the teeth where you want to move them. Same thing with the lower anteriors. We didn't use to provide that at all. We, we would not have any teeth on the wax rim, but now we have the six anterior teeth in case you need to play with those. Or if you want to show us something about increasing overjet or overbite, you can do it by moving uh, these teeth around. And this fits pretty well, but it's a lower, so it's not going to fit like the upper does. But again, this is an accurate representation of what the final denture is going to be like, which is actually going to come to you on the next appointment. And so there's really just two appointments here. Well, you got to take the impressions first and send it to us, but uh, you're going to get this back from us and you can try these in. And again, these are going to fit the same as the denture. So you should not need any adhesive, uh, maybe a little on the, on the lower, just depending on how much of the ridge is left. And then you and the patient verify whether or not you like the position of the teeth or you can change anything you need to change. And then you're going to send it back to us. And we're actually going to duplicate it at that point with some hydrocolloid. And so we duplicate it with some hydrocolloid. Actually, it's a little bit different. It would be in a flask. So we duplicate it with the hydrocolloid and then we will set the teeth uh, into the hydrocolloid, as you might imagine, and then uh, put the regular denture material into um, the flask. And what we end up with is an exact uh, replication of what you had um, in the patient's mouth, except of course it is now in the typical pink acrylic that we are used to seeing and that patients are used to seeing. But it's got all the same contours. Everything's the same as the uh, first resin base that was printed on the object printer, except everything's just a little bit cleaner and the, and the finish is smoother here uh, than it is on this resin, which was not made for, to be worn intraorally for any kind of long periods of time. 
And so at the next appointment, you already know how that denture is going to fit because you had this in just a week uh, or so ago. And so you know exactly how uh, this is going to fit. And there should not be uh, any surprises when you get the denture and put it in because that was definitely one of the things before where you had to cross your fingers a little bit. But as I mentioned, you'll, you'll learn very early on whether or not you have the fit uh, that you want or not. Now, of course, these will get scanned as well. And so this will be kept in the patient's digital file. So there's always um, a record of this. Um, the models were scanned. So certainly you could, this would be a good time to make a spare denture perhaps. Um, even if the patient lost or broke the denture, uh, if it was in a reasonable amount of time, this same actual scan might fit really well. But even if it didn't, let's say it's been four years uh, and they lose it, this is gonna make a fantastic uh, custom tray for you or we could even print this for you, process it, and send this to you for a patient who's lost or broken a denture. And then you would simply reline this chair side and then send it back to us for the permanent uh, reline, or you could put a soft reline material in there, have them wear it for a week and mold it, something like Viscogel, and then send it into the laboratory. So we could actually use this as kind of a, a custom tray, if you will, but it's the same denture they had before, the identical denture to what they had before, but obviously we've probably had some ridge resorption over four or five years, and so they would just be able to reline this and then you would send it in to us. And so we'll always have that digital file hanging around in case you need it for something that, that gets broken. So. In case you're wondering where we actually get the setup that's going to go into the teeth, it's from a library and uh, you and the patient are able to choose this. This is actually something that uh, I'm holding on to a pre-production uh, version of it right now because there is over 60, I think it's 65 now, smile arrangements that are available. So uh, you and the patient, and it looks a little bit different in the final brochure, uh, the ovoid ideal, tapering ideal, ovoid feminine, square tapering, the things that we used to do um, in dental school where we put the, uh, the thing over the patient's face to try to get the shape of their face and then the shape of their teeth. So uh, this actually shows a, a library of different smiles, some more masculine with flattened incisal edges, uh, crossbite if the patient was a class three and doesn't want their friends to notice that they're still not a class three, that can certainly be done. And then of course some more feminine looks where we've got more rounded line angles and kind of softer incisal edges. So you and the patient can actually kind of decide this uh, together. There's a lingualized occlusion if you feel that's appropriate. And so when you get this back, it's going to be set up according to whatever smile um, you and the patient kind of decided on. Uh, and so that's how the arrangement uh, is made. It's the digital libraries, the 65 different digital libraries uh, that's going to determine how these teeth are, are going to be arranged. And so again, in here, we've only got probably right now uh, nine or 10 of these that are actually printed up because the permanent uh, books of these, the official ones are still uh, in production. But you and the patient can take a look at it together and decide, and that's gonna determine what the setup of the teeth looks like on the CAD CAM uh, try dentures. Again, the bottom line is we've seen CAD CAM really change our laboratory in terms of uh, fixed prosthodontics. And now for the first time, we're really seeing it being used in removable prosthodontics, in this case for a full upper and lower denture. And again, the advantage is being able to see how the denture is going to fit at that first appointment, what you get back from us when you get this, and the ability to move 12 teeth around if need be. It's probably going to be these six anteriors, if anything, that gets moved around. And if the patient likes everything and you like how it fits, uh, your next appointment, you've got a set of finished dentists. So uh, CAD CAM has made it into the world of removable prosthodontics, and the fee for this uh, is the same as the fee for our regular dentures. So there's no additional charge uh, to do the CAD CAM dentures or to keep um, any of these files uh, on store for you in case the patient needs them later.